EA Sports FIFA 20 sponsors Saturday Social. This is Making It Pro with Nathan Redmond in partnership with EA Sports FIFA 20. So firstly, Nathan, I can see you there. How are you during these strange times? Yeah, all good. All good. Not too bad. Um, surviving and, you know, um, just in the same boat as everybody else, really. But, you know, uh, it's uh, enjoyable to be able to spend a lot of time with my family and stuff during this sort of lockdown period. So all good over here, mate. Cool. Nice to hear. Um, of course, we know you now as a Premier League player. You're playing at the elite level of football. But let's take it back to where it all started. A young, fresh-faced mm -hmm. Nathan Redmond as a kid. What are your <laughs> earliest memories of growing up and how big was football in your childhood? Um, you know, when you hear stories of sort of from older sort of family relatives who, who watched you grow and sort of say, oh, he was always doing this or he was always doing that. And, you know, everybody's got a little story behind them from when they were younger and it's probably no fitting with me that I always had a football and that's just something that are my earliest memories just love kicking it against the fence against the curb love it you know trying to work on loads of different things when you were younger and playing in the playground it's just one of those things it's, it's an indescribable feeling and I think the older you get because you've been consistently doing it for so long you just it just becomes normal and who are your role models then growing up? Who, who did you want to be like and which goals were you recreating? Was there a, a single player that you wanted to be like? Thierry Henry was the, 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 the focal one when I really started to like understand and be like super yeah. obsessed with football as a kid. What a player, um, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, just the way he moved on the pitch, the, the silk, the sort of aura, the, the, the finishing. Um, you know, and all top players sort of need that little bit of arrogance as well, don't they? You went from, of course, playing uh, in the streets uh, against the mm. fences to being a YTS player at Birmingham. And that, now all of us play mm. football in the street, but very few people make it to that stage. And as a Birmingham yeah. lad, what was that like to join the club at such a young age? It must have been a, a very exciting period of your life, that. Do, do you know what? I didn't want to go at the start. Oh, did you not? I, really? No, I didn't want to go at the start. I think I... Um, they were on me. I think it was Steve Hopcroft who was at West Brom. Who's at West Brom now? Um, he had yeah. scouted me from when I was like seven. Watched me when I was six, seven, sort of eight. And when I was eight, yeah. I, he asked me to come sort of to trials and stuff like that. And I remember debating it for weeks. I was like, I, I just don't want to go. I didn't want to leave because my Sunday team at the time was just full of my friends from my area. Um, so I remember actually giving it a go, um, and then. I played a few sort of trial games and stuff, and then I ended up, I ended up signing and staying there from from eight nine years old up until, you know, to the first team. Sixteen years old was when you made your first team debut, yeah. second youngest ever player at the time. So again, was that a time when you thought I'm, I'm ready for this, or, or even were you surprised at how early that debut came about? I was surprised, I think, at how rapid. Um, I was I was growing and learning in the game. I remember getting the 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 call when I was I think it was I think it was a head teacher who came to my class at one point when I was in year eleven last year of school, and he'd asked me to step out and my mom was on the phone and she was just like, "Wow, um, Alex McLeish wants you in the squad for the the sort of final two games of the season. I think it was against Everton and and Burnley. Um, it might have been Lee Carsley's last last game for Birmingham. I think they were." And I was still in school, so I was like, after that, I come off the phone, I was buzzing, and then I had to go sit back in like a lesson and like, <laughs> oh, shit. Hang on a minute, so you're in a class, and the headmaster yeah. knocks on the door and says, um, can Nathan come with me? Which usually, if the headmaster knocks on your door, you're thinking, yeah, that's a trouble. bad thing, it's detention. And then on yeah. the phone is your mum saying that you, you're going to play yeah, for Birmingham, I'm, and you had to go back in that class. I mean, how did you concentrate in that lesson? I didn't, I thought, oh, this is it, don't need school no more, <laughs> like, this is it. Then I remember like sort of telling a few of my friends and stuff, um, and it was just it was just one of them feelings where I was like, I was I was still in school, I hadn't done my GCSEs yet, so I was like, this is mm. this is like a bit too good to be true, but at the same time, yeah. um, I was just embracing it. You obviously have enjoying the time at Birmingham, Norwich City coming for you. How tough a decision was that uh, to leave Birmingham and go to Norwich? Talk us through that sort of period in your career. It was it was tough, but at the same time it wasn't. Um, I always sort of envisioned playing for Birmingham, and I'd had sort of three, well, two solid seasons at Birmingham, and then the one season I was sort of in and out and playing in the cup games and stuff. But 
um, I, th I think it was the first year with Chris Hewitt when he came um, and he moved me into the dressing room straight away, into the first team dressing room. So I'd had a year in the scholar dressing room and then now I was in the first team dressing room. So it was me uh, and Jack Butler got moved in at the same time. Mm. So when he actually left and went to Norwich, um, he did say to me, like, you, you should have probably one more year in the championship before you know you, you you're ready for the before you're ready for the premier league so you know it was it was it was a tough decision to obviously leave get up leave yeah. move out you know completely different part of the world in in norfolk um but it was it was it was something that i just felt right at the time something that i felt like i sort of had to do and you know, i i wouldn't I, I wouldn't regret any decision i made and how did you celebrate promotion was that was that party time who who celebrated the hardest Probably Delia and Michael, to be honest. <laughs> Delia Smith, yeah? Go on, yeah, you've got, you've got to give me a that. story. How um, does Delia Smith celebrate promotion? I, I need no, to hear we, a story we, about this. We'd, we'd, uh, we'd, we'd stayed in the um, in the Hilton opposite Wembley um, the night yeah. before. And the day after, um, sort of the, the night of the game, sort of everybody said, listen, win or lose, we're all going to come back here anyway. We're going to have a drink and yeah. celebrate what's been a great season. So after the game, you know, it took us forever to get out of the stadium because we're all, we're all, you know, having a drink, singing, dancing, all in the changing room, and then we get over to the to the Hilton, and literally, the, the Delia and Michael have hired out the, the the bar at the top, and it's got all of our friends, all of our families, everyone's wow. mixing and mingling. It was just a that sort of sums up the 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 club. You will hear it from so many players who have played for Norwich who mm. say that. Um, you know the, the the club and the area as a whole is unbelievable. Obviously, Southampton came in. You're there now. Mm -hmm. you have Southampton, ten million pound. Uh, how big yeah. a moment was that? And, and and with a price tag like that, does that weigh on your mind at all when you do sign? I think I've got way of it to be honest. I moved to, to from Birmingham to Norwich for two point five or three point two million or something like that, and I'd moved to from from Norwich Southampton for ten maybe plus one or, or plus plus surplus yeah. or whatever it is. Um, and I just remember like the year before, you know, uh, so I think Callum Chambers had gone for 15 million, Jordan Ibe had gone yeah. for 15 million, you know, there's a lot of players that were going for 15, 20 million and I was like, you know, that's that's a big number, whereas I'd sort of, 10 million's a big number still, maybe in this day and age it's probably not and it's only four years mm -hmm. on. Um, but yeah, I probably yeah. just sort of scooped under the market and I was just, I think the, the, the biggest thing about moving to Southampton at the time was I remember looking at the squad list and just thinking like, wow, like there's some very, very talented players and international players in this squad, which hopefully I can learn from. I knew they were getting um, a new manager, um, so everything was sort of new for me and I just, I just wanted to go there and literally learn. Um, and then mm. learn and learn as much as I could and I didn't expect to sort of start the first couple of games. I remember when he signed, I mean obviously everyone now is widely regarded as one of if not the best defenders in the world mm. but at the time with the price tag to Liverpool there were a lot of people who thought oh that is that is quite a lot for Virgil. Did you always know that he, he had this and think that he is, <laughs> could go on to become one of the best ever? Just tell us what he was yeah. like. Oh, he was he was he was great great off the pitch on the pitch. There's no point trying to play against him. You just stay away from him. <laughs> no point. He's fast. He's faster than you. He's more powerful. He's more stronger. He can jump quicker. He doesn't get out of like third gear. I don't think third or yeah. fourth gear. But he's no. He's he's a great lad. I remember in pre-season when I first joined, I must have skipped past him. A bit lucky, um, and <laughs> and hit on my left foot into the bottom bin. And I remember him saying, like, he was like, you won't do that again. He was like, I, he was like, you will never, ever do that again. I never did it again. <laughs> Whatever. I never, never did, did it, again. it again. Ever. Ever in training. I'd never wow. got past him again. So I cherished that moment at the time. But <laughs> even, when, even, when I, even when I was there, I knew that just seeing him day out, day in, day out in training and in games, he just makes the game look so easy. So wow. when he actually went to Liverpool and the price tag was... I was like, that could be doubled in a few years. Like, if if yeah, he was to move yeah. on again, he's 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 worth it, man. He's a top top talent and a, a great human as well. Um, Redders, I hope you don't mind me asking this, but I want to ask about. I read an interesting article which talked about a particular period in your career where you you struggled a bit. Um, talking about the, the yeah. penalty that you missed in the under twenty ones. Um, mm. in the semi-final against Germany, which coincided with a dip in form and some injuries. How yeah, tough yeah, was yeah. that period of your career? And how did you come out of that? 
I think it was just one of those moments where to let sort of not not necessarily my, my, the country down because um, it's an under twenty one tournament and obviously the mm. pressures are there but they're not there but I think yeah, the pressure yeah. was probably there more so because there wasn't any first team football on in that summer um, so yeah. all eyes were fixed on the under twenty ones I think it was just the fact of letting and let so many people down who I'd grew with throughout the whole ages mm. um, and I sort of struggled to 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 manage that um, it's probably the first time something that that major has happened because I'd missed penalties yeah. before I'd missed penalties in, in, in penalty shootouts and games and it never fazed me um, but I think it was just because of the sort of collection of you know this is the final time I'm playing I'm going to play for the 21s yeah. I've just missed the penalty yeah. which has taken us out I feel like I've let like the staff and the players down that I play with because we've grew together for so many years so it was it was a it was a, a real emotional sort of time for me where it did take a, a little bit of time to to get over with you're one of the players that's played at every single level looking at here under 16s yeah. 17s 18s 19s 20s 21s and the seniors so when you mm. finally got that call up to uh the senior team and made your yeah. england international debut what was that moment like you're always reminiscing you brings a smile to my face it was it was just it, it was just a reminder that what all the coaches said during every single age group it's like there's a system and there's a pathway and mm. you know you play well at your clubs there's there's no there's no sort of telling that you won't be there um, or give yourself a good chance um, how you conducted yourself in the younger ages definitely put you in good stead for when you get into the seniors or with the 21s because it's a bit more relaxed but at the same time you're an adult now and was there a standout player do you think was there one player that you just thought wow he's unbelievable or is it hard to say when when there's such quality i think i'll go with 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 rashi um he was definitely marcus he was marcus definitely, Rashford, yeah 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 i mean even i think i think maybe like four four or five months before that we were in a 21s camp together um, and you could see the boy was talented, um, but then literally the the, the f maybe six months after that, he'd, obviously he'd been playing at United and stuff like that. Yeah. Six, six months after that, in the March squad, I think it was, I was like, this boy is a uh, <laughs> he's different. He's, he's, yeah. he's got he's he's got great height. He's physically he's he's he's, he's strong. He's sharp. If you want to, if you get lined up by if you get lined up by anybody. Raheem, Jesse, Marcus, any uh, Jaden, you get lined up by any of those one v one, you are in trouble. But I think it's the speed and the intelligence of what he showed so yeah. early. Um, I just thought, yeah, he's he's he'd be a problem. The other thing I think of with you is Pep Guardiola after the game against Southampton coming up yeah, to you yeah. and saying, "What a great was it? What a great player you are!" Along those lines, that that must be good. Yeah, yeah. When Pep says something like that, that that's pat, pat yeah. on the back moment. Is that he was just questioning why I hadn't performed the same way as what I did last year um, because I think the first the, the, the year before I'd scored at Man City when we drew 1-1 and uh, I, I remember seeing him in the tunnel then and he shaking my hand and saying you know well done you played really Class. well um, yeah. but then this time he was just sort of in his own manner just saying like why are you not playing how you did last time you know you're an unbelievable player I really like you and like this is a shame and da 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 and I was just like the, I was like you know I'm just doing what my manager asks out of respect yeah. because you know no one player is bigger than the team um, and then afterwards you know a couple of days later you know everything's going mad in the media and he'd um, his his people had contacted my agent and he just wanted to have a conversation on the phone so he'd phoned me and just you know said like I, I apologise for everything that's that's sort of going on Wow. Um, and you know I, I, I don't want anything to sort of become sort of not in on good terms in terms of uh, yeah. us and I was like no it's, I was like, it's, it's completely fine I understand where you're coming from I was like and also I can understand how much the media can exaggerate things at time I was like so yeah, yeah. once the questions come to my way I says I'll answer them honestly and truthfully um, so yeah that was that was sort of a, a nice touch from him to sort of do that as well love that Nathan it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you about no, all the highs and lows of your career uh, hopefully many more years to come. We'll uh, we'll catch up soon. Look after yourself and I'll speak yeah, soon. Definitely. Appreciate it, mate. Take care.